Hey, I'm Derwin Clark, your speaker for the new Lifestyle Series from Trinidad, the land of sea, sand, sunshine. From all care the Lord has brought us once again he has afforded us the privilege to be here especially in this fashion praise God Amen. good evening everyone and thank you for tuning in to the new lifestyle cross-cultural evangelistic series with pastor Derwin Clark I am your host Charlicia Robinson and I am Claudia Fries Butler. It is a pleasure to have you all joining us this evening. We're coming to you live from the Woodburn District of Seventh-day Adventist Churches, located in Yala, St. Thomas, Jamaica. The man of God has been filling us with holy bread, bread derived from our God himself. And let me tell you, wonderful things are happening. Indeed. So I encourage you to share the link so that as many persons can be blessed. Definitely in the chat below, you will see several links to several different places that you can go to communicate with us. Um, you can definitely look at the link below that talks about our prayer line. We have persons ready to take your prayer request for you to mention to them exactly what is happening and to pray with you. There is a link for the form that you can fill out, also a link to join the Zoom meeting below. We also have Bible school lessons available. So if you'd like to learn more about the Bible, you can feel free to be a part of the classes. And most interesting, we have a graduation ceremony at the end.
We have another wonderful program lined up for you this evening. But before we get into those proceedings, let us just bow our heads as we pray. Most righteous, most holy, and our everlasting Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy precious name. We come before you, giving you thanks for your love towards humanity. And so, Lord, we come in the name of Jesus, understanding that there is power in his name. And so, Lord, as we come before you in this campaign, we ask that you will bless, direct. We ask that you will grant the Holy Spirit that you will infill and empower every person that will partake. And those in the hearing of our voices, wherever, from the length and breadth of the entire world, will come to a clearer understanding to know that Jesus is soon to come and will repent and give their life to you before it's eternally too late. We ask for your blessing. Continue to be with the man's servant as he continue to proclaim your word. We ask for your divine intervention. Break up every stronghold of the enemy and so that your people will be free to worship you. Have thine own way and take full control of this series we pray. This and other unmentioned mercies we ask giving you thanks. For we pray and ask them all in Jesus' precious name.
434 from our Seventh day Adventist hymnal, we speak of the realms of the blessed. That's number 434. giving however 
in recognition of his faithfulness to us, we give back to him from what he has given us. The Lord is depending on you as much as he's depending on me to use our resources to enhance his cause. I therefore encourage you to contribute to the mission. The accounting details are being displayed on screen. You may transfer your contributions accordingly. Also, should you have any inquiries or concerns, please feel free to send us an email. Give and it will come back to you. Good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. With the same measure that you give, it shall be given back to you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your blessings on us. We thank you that we can contribute to your cause. We ask that you will help us to give with a heart of love so that your message may be taken to all the world in this or generation. In Jesus' name, amen. The scripture readings are taken from St. Matthew 24, verse 42 to 44, and James 5, verse 7 and 8. Watch therefore, for we know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief, the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Therefore be ye also ready, for in such an hour as ye think not the Son of Man cometh. Be patient therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord, Behold, the husbandman waited for the precious fruit of the earth, and hath long patience for it, until he receive it. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord, draw it nigh. There ended the reading of God's holy word. I see 
prophecies fulfilling signs of the time appearing everywhere I can almost hear the Father Welcome back to another segment in our new lifestyle cross-cultural evangelism series. Pastor Derwin Clark is our evangelist for this series. He is also the publishing director from the South Caribbean Conference in Trinidad and Tobago. And what he will be presenting on tonight is how to escape trouble. It is certainly a mind-boggling thought, how to escape trouble. Definitely, he will let you know exactly the route to take. It is another night for a power-packed sermon. I'm just going to ask you to do one thing, ensure that you are sharing this. There's someone out there who needs to hear this message this evening. But before we hear from the man of God, we are going to listen to our theme song. And the next voice you'll hear is that of Pastor Clark. Peace, grace, 
Good afternoon to my online family and all my good friends out there in Woodburn and Albion. Uh, it's a great work that I know that you're doing out there uh, as we share God's word uh, with people around the world. I understand that our numbers are growing. I even heard that there are men and women, boys and girls who are are ready and requesting baptism this Sabbath, and that's good news. Uh, God's name be praised. We look forward to be doing mighty work under God, and we know that hearts will be blessed. Uh, men and women who are listening, uh, their lives will be changed for good, uh, for time and for eternity. And so this evening, we look forward to another wonderful evening under God. And so we want to get in for tonight's, this evening's uh, presentation, How to Escape Trouble. Uh, let's bow our heads to prayer. Our Father, we are so thankful for your love, thankful for your provision, that even though we have trouble here, you have a plan that we can escape it. So we pray, Lord, that each person who are listening tonight will leave with the hope that one day trouble will be taken care of. So bless this preacher and each listener we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Praise God for you. Uh, we are talking about how to escape trouble. Uh, everything in this world is not good. Everything in this world is not happy. Everything in this world is not beautiful. Uh, real trouble exists in this world. On the international scene, we read about terrorism and unrest. We read about wars. Uh, we turn the pages and there is about genocide. Uh, we, we turn again and we can look not only on the international scene, but we get the local news right at home. We read about going on in the family and in the home about rape going on, about incest, child molestation in the home. In the home, we see that there is abuse, spouse abuse, elder abuse, child abuse going on in the home. As we go out into the streets, uh, there's murders and crime. As we look on the business scene tonight, 
Uh, we realize that there is embezzlement and fraud. Everybody trying to see how they could acquire more and gain more. No rational person can deny that there is real trouble. Real trouble exists in our world today. Uh, so the big question we are trying to answer tonight is how to escape trouble. I want to suggest to you tonight that if we need to escape trouble, we need to build on the premise or on the belief that this world is not our home. I'm not just talking off the tip of my tongue. I'm not just saying and sharing my own words. I'm speaking on the authority of God's word. Because my brothers and my sisters, we have a sure word. A sure word of hope that we can escape the troubles in this world. And if we want to be able to escape the troubles that exist in this world, we must build on the authority of God's word. We must build on the idea, on the premise that this world is not our own. The Bible helps us to appreciate this. In Philippians chapter 3 and verse 26, it says, But our citizenship, our citizenship is in heaven. Hallelujah. Eagerly we wait upon our Savior, Jesus Christ. I said our citizenship is in heaven. This world is not our home. And we look towards heaven, Paul says in Ephesians, and we await from there a Savior. We need someone who to save us from all that's going on in this troubled world. And that person we know is Jesus Christ. And so Paul helps us to appreciate it. In Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 14, he says, For here we have no lasting city. We seek a city that comes from above. Yes, we have no abiding city here, but we seek the city that comes from above. All we have below on earth and planet earth is just trouble. And so we look forward uh, towards heaven and hope. And it is only as we look forward towards heaven and home uh, could we have any hope uh, of escaping this troubled world. You see, my brothers and my sisters, friends of mine, the only way we can have some hope and have any chance of escaping the trouble in this world uh, is to have a hope in our heavenly home. You see, my brothers and my sisters, the hope of heaven teaches us that we can cope with the troubles in this world. I said the hope of heaven and home uh, teaches us that we can cope with the troubles in this world. Oh yes, Paul tells us that our homeland is heaven, uh, that the world is not our home. And this passage of scripture he shares with us is the transforming truth that we will have our escape from trouble. Oh yes, we will all have our escape from trouble when Jesus comes. I want to let you know when we get home, there will be no more trouble. We are not home yet, but the good news tonight is that we are almost there. I said we are not home yet. When we get home, we will be free from trouble. We are not home yet, but we are almost there. So there is a plan this evening I want to share with you. A plan to escape from trouble. Some folks are able to escape from it all, while others are not able to do so. I'm saying if we have hope, if we are looking forward to escaping the trouble here, then our behavior must match our belief. Paul says that we are citizens of a heavenly country. Our behavior, therefore, <laughs> cannot be like the world. Oh yes, that's what he shares with us in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 6. That because Christ we came into the world, we learned last day, dead in trespass and sin, our lot is dead, but we can escape it all to Jesus Christ who comes by and quickens us. And he takes us to seat in heavenly places with him. And so 
Hey, as citizens of a heavenly country, our minds is in heaven. Our feet may be on terra flama and planet earth, but our minds in glory. Hey, if we have any hope, if we are looking to escape the troubles here, then our behavior must match our belief. Oh yes, our behavior must reflect what we believe. Hey, look at the heroes. The heroes of the Old Testament. Their behavior was dictated by the fact that this world was not their home. Their behavior was dictated by the fact that this world had no hold on them. Oh yes, there should be nothing here that should hold us. Nothing here that we crave for. We have a better country to look forward to. And so it is with us today. If like them, we are looking for a new heaven and a new earth. If we are looking for a city, a heavenly country, then our behavior must reflect our belief. It says there in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 13 to 14, they admitted that they were all aliens and strangers in the earth. Oh yes, my brothers and my sister, read the text. In Hebrews chapter 6, 11 and verse 16, it says they were what? Longing for a what? Better country, a heavenly one. Their minds were fixed on heaven and home. And so the troubles in this world, hey, look like nothing to them. Oh yes, I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, we, God, has a plan for escape. And Matthew tells us about it. Matthew chapter 24 and 25 tells us about how and when it comes to escaping trouble, that there are two types of people when it comes to escaping trouble. Those who are ready to escape it and those who are not ready to escape it. Two types of groups of people. According to Matthew chapter 24 and 25, those who are not ready falls into at least two categories. Hi, there are those who aren't expecting a way of escape. Uh, and there are those who are just not prepared for it. Two categories about, uh, of those persons who are not expecting, who are not ready to have their escape from trouble. They are not expecting it, and they are not prepared for the escape. Oh yes, read about it. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 27. Uh, Jesus is speaking. He says, but as the days of Noah were, so also is the coming of the Son of Man will be. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, in the days of Noah, men and women were in trouble. This world, since Adam, we learn, was in trouble. And so in the days of Noah, there was trouble. Greater trouble was about to come. And so they were warned, but they weren't expecting it to come. Neither were they expecting to escape it. And so they just weren't ready. I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, Matthew chapter 24 tells us about those who weren't expecting the trouble and expecting a way of escape. Why? Because they had grown comfortable with the trouble around them. And they were grown used to it. And even though they heard about bigger trouble coming, they couldn't care the more. They just weren't expecting the trouble to come, nor expecting an escape from it. Matthew chapter 25, however, tells us about those who weren't fully prepared. They understood that there was trouble. They understood that there was a way of escape, but they weren't fully prepared. They weren't ready for their escape. Their behavior did not reflect their belief. Oh yes, and so there is where we want to focus tonight as we try to answer the question, how could we escape from trouble? Oh yes, Matthew chapter 25 and verses 1 to 3. It reads, let's read it. And that time, at that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like what? Ten virgins who took their lambs and went to meet the bridegroom. Oh yes, 
Five of them, it says, were foolish, and five were wise. The foolish took their lamps, but did not take any oil in them. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters, Matthew chapter 25 gives us a picture of a wedding in Palestine day. Now when you are invited to a wedding in the day in Palestine back then, in Jesus' day, uh, lucky for you, once you were invited, you receive a parcel. And that gives you the clothing you were to wear. You didn't have that expense. So these 10 bridesmaids that were invited to go to the wedding didn't have the necessary bottle about where they're going to get that fancy garbs, that fancy dress. It was sent to them in the mail. And so they all had the same uh, dress, I expect, because the one Simpsons there out there in Palestine made the same design, instructed by the bride and bridegroom. And so they all look the same. I imagine they went down to the lone beauty parlor out there in Palestine and went down to the hair stylist and she gave them the same hair style. Oh yes, and then they went across uh, to do their, their nails, do a pedicure and a manicure, and they get the same finish. They, they move a little further out in Palestine, and they went by the, the, the fragrance store to get themselves a nice perfume. I imagine that they went out there to Pennywise in Port of Spain, Palestine. Or, or maybe they, they, they went by that, that fragrant place out there uh, in, in the mall, out there in, in, in Kingston. Oh yes, and they tried to get themselves the best perfume. The best was spignet. But that will cause them, hey, a, a whole year's wage. And so they did the next best thing. They got themselves imitation spignet. Oh yeah, so I imagine that they all look the same. And they all smell the same. Oh yes, so outwardly looking at these ten ladies, they look the same. But inwardly, they were different. Yes, they were the same, but different. Some were wise and some were foolish. Some were expecting uh, to make it in, and some were unaware that they just weren't going to get in. In other words, for us today, some are looking forward to escaping trouble and expecting that they will escape it. And others are looking forward, but yet they are not ready. So it is tonight, with like this evening, like the church goers, they are not washed in his blood, some of them. Uh, some of them are not doing his will. Yes, they are going to church, reading their Bible, expecting Christ to come someday to take them out of this land of trouble. But they are not all filled with the Holy Spirit. They are not all ready. Oh yes, so looking at these girls, they look the same. Uh, Matthew Chapter 25 and verse 5 tell us, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Oh yes, they all looked the same. And they all slumbered and slept. Oh yes, I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, we all sleep sometimes, don't we? We all take a nap sometimes. We all get weary sometimes in our spiritual walk. But I want to let you know, we must be ready. Whether we fall asleep, we must be cognizant that we ought to be ready for when the cry comes at midnight. Yes, so Matthew chapter 25 and verse 6 tells us, at midnight, <laughs> at midnight a cry was heard. Behold, the bridegroom's coming. Go ye out to meet him. Oh yes. The cry came that a bridegroom was coming. And Matthew chapter 25 and verse 7 tells us, Then who? Then who? How many? 
all those bridegroom arose. They trimmed their lamps. Hallelujah. Yes, they all arose. They all slept. They all got up at the midnight sun. And they took their lamps. They all had lamps. They trimmed their whips. They all had the tools to, to cut and to trim their wicks. Yes, but they had no oil. And therefore, they had no fire. It reminds me of the story I heard about the chimpanzees. Do you know the story? Here it was, the woodcutter made their way into the forest and cutting their logs. And so when lunchtime came, they found the best tree, nice shaded tree. And beneath it, they put their stones, collected their stones, three stones, and then collected uh, their sticks, a little big stick, and then the smaller ones and the brambles. And they light their matches, got their fire, made their meal. After they were done with their lunch, they, as good foresters, they dismantled everything, placed back the stones, sweep away the place, and made it on to do their evening's labor. When they were finished, the chimpanzees who were looking on came down, <laughs> took up the stones, put them together nicely, just as the men had done. They went by, took the larger piece of sticks, put them across each other, took some smaller pieces, and placed it there, a nice, neat fireside. They had everything. They had everything but the fire. Reminds me that these girls, they all looked the same. They all slumbered and sleep. They all got up and trimmed their lamps. They had everything. They had a lamp. They had a wick. But they had no oil. They weren't ready. Oh, yes, they had everything. But you say they had no God. They had everything. But I say they had no Holy Spirit. They had no oil in their lives. They were running on empty. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, no change were wrought in them. But I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, if we're expecting to escape trouble, we need to be ready. We need to have oil in our lamps. We need to allow God's word to make the necessary changes in our lives. Our lamps ought to be bright, be burning bright, like the songwriter says. Let your lamps be what? Burning bright. The darkest hour is nearing. The darkest hour of earth's long night before, before the Lord's appearing. Yes, yeah, so then trim your lamps, I say to you this evening, my brethren there. Then trim your lamps with godly fear. The master's coming, joy near. Let your lamp be burning bright. Oh yes, you know, the old and early Christians used to say, as they meet each other, Maranatha, ah, the Lord's coming, Maranatha. Oh, yes, and they will sing and say, My lambs all trim and burn and bright, that when my master, my savior, opens the gates, my soul to him may take its flight. I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, just now, when Jesus opened the gates of glory and come cascading down and planted it with a retinue of angels, he'll call, Ah, that midnight song will go out. For the Lord will blow his trumpet. Yes, and the dead in Christ. And all those who are living in Christ will rise up and take their flight. Hallelujah. Triumphantly to glory gate. One more time we'll hear that same triumphant song. That the Psalms is sing, sung about when Jesus made his triumphant entry after purchasing our price with his own death in Calvary. When he took his flight, Oh, yes, and the angels saw him coming up. Says, lift up your heads, O ye gate, and be lifted up, that the king of glory might come in. Oh, yes, we will take our flights in glory away from trouble. We will, as we go up with Jesus, the ten thousands and thousands of us, as we walk in our white robes and going up before the gates with Jesus, hear the song again for the second time will be sung. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, 
that the king and his children, his ransom from the earth may come in. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters, in Matthew chapter 25, verses 8 and 9, uh, the saga, the dialogue continues. It says, and, uh, and the foolish says unto the wife, unto the wise, give us your oil, for our lambs are going out. Now, how foolish can one get? Eh? How foolish can one get? Now, they all look the same. Uh, they all slumbered and slept. They all trimmed their lamps. But the wise had oil, and the foolish counted on others. Yes, the foolish counted on others. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters. Uh, we, we need not get to that place where, where we're going to count on others because they don't have, as they rightly said, we don't have enough for us, far less to have enough for you. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, the foolish had to go away and buy oil, but the wise had oil that was reserved. Oh, yes, let's read about it. It says in Matthew, verse 10, 25, verse 10, And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in, yes, with him to the marriage. And the door was what? The door was shut. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, the foolish. Huh? The door was shut on the foolish. The foolish was shut out. They weren't ready. The wise entered in, but the foolish was shut out. They weren't ready. The bridegroom came. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, I'm saying to you, friends of mine, listening to wherever you are in your homes around the world. Uh, the Christ is coming. Oh, yes, ready or not, Jesus is coming. And, and so we ought to be ready. And so it was. The door was shut. Yes, the door was shut. You see, my brothers and my sisters, we close the door on him. If we close the door on Jesus, because the Bible revelation tells us he comes by every moment. Every moment of our lives, and he knocks at our heart's door. He says, if you open, I will come in and sup with you. I will change your life. I raw changes in your life. But you close the door on him, and now he comes. You're not ready. Is The door is shut on you. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, he came by. When he came by knocking, he came by so that he can pour the oil, that he can pour the oil from glory into your lives so that your lambs could keep burning bright. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, when he came by knocking at your heart door, he came by knocking so that he can live in your life and brighten your life. Oh, yes, but you didn't allow him. In Matthew chapter 25 and verse 11 to 13 says, and afterwards came also the other virgin, saying what? Lord, Lord, <laughs> Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered them and said, Verily I say unto you what? I know you not. Huh? I know you not. I don't have a relationship to me. We are not intimate. In fact, that's what's said there. Oida. <laughs> uh, they had no close relationship. They had not an experiential relationship type knowledge with Jesus. And so he can say to them, I know you not. I know you not. Lord, Lord, they says. And he replies, I know you not. Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters, uh, those who Jesus knows, those who Jesus know, he filled with the spirit so that they can make the changes necessary in their lives. Those who Jesus know, he fell with the spirit. Now, who are they that Jesus know? Who are they those that Jesus know? Well, the Bible tells us in Luke chapter 8 and verse 21, it says, uh, he replied, my mother and my brother are those who what? Hear the words and put them into practice. All those who practice Jesus' words are those who Jesus know. And so if you are to be known by him, you ought to hear Read and practice his word. Oh yes, who are those that Jesus know? They are those who do the will of his father. 
That's what he says in Matthew chapter 7 and verse 21. He says, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but only the ones who are, who does the will of my Father in heaven. Oh yes, so if we want to be known by Jesus, we ought to do the Father's will. And number three, if we want to be known by Jesus, we ought to obey him. Are you hearing me tonight? If we want to be known by Jesus, we ought to obey him. And so that's what Acts says, Acts chapter 5 and verse 32. This is how it reads. How does it read? It says, and we are witnesses to those things. And so it is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who are, to those who obey him. If we want to be filled up with the oil from glory, from the Holy Spirit in our lives, we need to obey God. So how could we escape trouble? How could we escape trouble? We must be known by God. Because he say on that last day, when the time to our escape comes, he say, I do not know you. And so we escape trouble when we are known by him, when we have an intimate relationship with him, when we are filled with his Holy Spirit that wrought changes in our life, when we love and obey his truth, when we love and obey his will, when we love and obey his law. Hallelujah. That's how we are ready to escape trouble. That's how he knows us. I want to let you know, my brothers and sisters, friends of mine, it is time to escape trouble. It is time to be known by Jesus. The Son of Man is ready to come, and ready or not, he's coming. Oh, yes, that's what Ezekiel says. Have you read it? That's what Ezekiel says. Let, let's read it. Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 6. It says the end. <laughs> the what? The end has come. Huh? It, is, it has dawned for you. And behold, it has come. Oh yes, the end is here. Jesus is ready to come. Oh yes, he's almost here. And so ready or not, he's coming. Uh, I can hear the rider. Uh, I can hear him riding. The king is coming. Oh yes, behold, behold, he comes. Oh yes, my brothers, my sisters, as we read this book, as we read this book, this book, the vital theme of this book, this Bible, this sure word. Uh, is about his coming. Oh yes, someone that says who did the research that uh, every text that talks about his first advent, his first coming, there are about eight that talks about his second coming. And so the Old Testament says that a man is coming, a Messiah is coming. And the New Testament says that man, that Messiah, that anointed one has come. And the, old, the New Testament again echoes it saying that man, that Messiah will come this time as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is coming. Oh, yes. And the Bible is a book about his coming. David in his time declared it. In Psalms 50 verses 3 and 4, David says, and the Lord shall what? And God shall come and shall not keep silent. A fire shall devour before him. And it shall be very tempestuous round about. So David declared it. And Paul proclaimed it. That Jesus is the way that's going to come to give us our escape. Here is he said in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 16. He says, for the Lord himself, hallelujah, the Lord himself shall be sent from heaven with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, he'll come with a shout. Yes, and he's coming. So David declared it. Paul proclaimed it. And thank God Peter preached it. In 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10, he says, But the day of the Lord will what? The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Oh, yes. So Peter preached it. Oh, yes. David declared it. Paul proclaimed it. Peter preached it. And Lord, bless your heart. Jesus himself promised it. Oh, yes. As he was about to go, he says to the disciples, and by extension to you and me, in John chapter 14, verses 1 to 3, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in me. In my Father's house there are what? Many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. 
And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Hallelujah. I will come again. He promises. I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus himself promised that he will come again. And the angels affirmed it. They said to them in, in Acts when the disciples were looking there wistfully to heaven. In Acts chapter 1 and verse 9 to 11, the angels came by after Jesus ascended into heaven and said, Ye men of Galilee, why are you looking unto heaven? This same Jesus, this same who? This same Jesus, yes, will come in like manner as you see him go into heaven. I said to you, my brothers and my sisters, ah, when I look at the news these days, I don't see the trouble in the world. I don't see the murders. I don't see the kidnapping. I, I, I don't see uh, all the tragedies in the world that's going on. What I see written across the newspapers, across every television, is Christ is coming soon. And I want to let you know, ready or not, Jesus is coming. That's what Revelation chapter 19 tells us. If beginning at verse 11, it says, Then I saw the heavens open. And behold, a white horse, and the one sitting on it, his name is what? Faithful and true and righteous. He judge and make war. Oh yes, it says, his eyes is as a flaming fire. It says, his head as a crumb. Uh, it says, his vestures dip in blood. It, it says, his armies coming, uh, following him. And he is in his mouth, is there is a sharp sword. And on his tie, the name written there, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I say tonight, he's coming, ready or not, he is coming. Why is he coming? Oh yes, I'll tell you, in as much as you're asking, he's coming because he loves us. Why is he coming? He's coming because he wants to rescue us. Why is he coming? He's coming because he wants to put an end to the great controversy. Why is he coming? He's coming because he wants to put an end to suffering. Why is he coming? He's coming because he wants to put the undertaker out of business. Why is he coming? He's coming because the house and scheme in heaven is ready. Why is he coming? Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters, he's coming because heaven is a real place, <laughs> waiting and prepared for the inhabitants of planet Earth. Why is he coming? He's coming because he's just and holy. Why is he coming? He's coming because he has been away long enough. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters. Revelations chapter 7 and verse 1 says, Behold, he is coming with the clouds, and every eye, every eye shall see him, even those who pierce him. Everyone will see him. So the big question is, are you ready? He is coming. Are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Oh, yes, my brothers and my sisters. Jesus has prepared our eternal home. And Christ will bring to us his church. And he'll bring us whom he has purchased with his blood. He's coming for us. But I want to let you know, my brothers and my sisters, the sad story is that when he comes, some of us will be unprepared. Some of us will be unaware. Some of us will be surprised, but thank God, some of us will be ready. Praise God. Oh yes, Luke chapter 21 and verse 25 says, And there shall be what? Signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth, distress of nation, and perplexities in the sea. Oh yes, there's trouble going on. Oh yes, there's trouble going on all around us. In the land, in the nation, in the sea, the wave roaring. But look at this. And verse 27 it says, Then... Amidst all this trouble going on, amidst all the trouble going on, it says, Then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. How? With power and glory. Oh, yes, my brothers and sisters, I say to him, he's coming. Come on down, Lord Jesus. Come on down because we are tired of this old world and its brokenness. Oh, yes, come on down, Lord Jesus. Because when you come, Isaiah says, 35 verses 4 to 6, the, the blind shall see. Oh yes, when he come, the dumb shall speak uh, and sing and the lame shall walk again. Oh yes, we will get rid of trouble at last. 
So come on down, Lord Jesus. We are tired of this whole world. It's murders, it's death, and it's dying. Oh yes, come on down, Lord Jesus. For when he comes, we are told that God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. Oh yes, when he comes, there will be no more death, no more trouble, no more sorrow, no more crying. Oh yes, there will be no more pain. Oh yes, for the former things, as we know them, the former troubles will be passed away. Revelation 21.4. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters, Jesus is coming to take us to our forever home. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters, we know not the hour. Ah, and that's why we ought to be ready. And to, this evening is a good time to be ready. It's a good time to give our hearts to Jesus. A good time for him to step in and change our lives and prepare us, fill us with the Holy Spirit, fill us with the oil, enough pump it into our lives from glory so that we can have enough to keep our lights burning bright until he comes. Oh yes, my brothers and my sisters, we can give our life to him. We can make our lives new. We can wash away the sins by his blood and by his water. Oh yes, the question is tonight, Jesus is coming. Take us out at last from trouble. But are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus to come? Oh yes, this book, this show where the theme of this book is Jesus. And how he died to save me. Oh yes, how he died to save you and me. So he can give us that assurance give us that salvation of assurance so that we can be ready when he comes again so are you ready for jesus to come are you faithful in all that you do have you fought that good fight have you stood for your rights have others seen jesus in you are you ready for jesus to come are you ready to stand this evening in your place are you ready uh, to look into Jesus' face? Uh, can you look up right now and say, this is my Lord. Are you ready for Jesus to come? Oh yes, this evening we can escape trouble. This evening you could be ready. All you got to do is just say yes to Jesus. All you got to do is just come to Jesus. Just ask him to come in. Yes, and fill your life with the oil. Fill your life with his Holy Spirit so that your light could be kept burning bright until he comes. Oh yes, tonight I ask him, make that decision. Make that decision. Oh yes, write it there in the chat. Write it there. Take down right now that decision card and place there. I'm ready. Huh? I'm ready for Jesus to come. Are you ready? Oh yes, your response is, I'm ready for Jesus to come. Oh yes, response number two, I, I want to be ready. Uh, not yet, pastor, as I am here, but I want to be ready. Two decisions tonight, I'm ready. I want to be ready. Oh yes, make them now. Either of them right now. Jesus will give you. He died to save you. He wants to take you out of trouble. That was his mission that was accomplished for you already. All you got to do is to be ready when he comes to go home with him by accepting him now, asking him to come in now. And so that's what I want to do for you right now as you bow your heads right there in prayer as you make your decision. Right here and right now, let me pray for you. Father God, touch some hand. You heard them. You, you, you heard uh, from their hearts. You who don't look at the outward appearance, but you look and read the heart. You know, Lord, that they desire to be ready to go home with you, to come out of this trouble, sin, curse, trouble, earth, to a great and a wonderful tomorrow. So, Father, make them ready. Give them your Holy Spirit in their lives and help them to keep their lamps burning bright until you come is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. So may God bless you real good. May God bless you. Oh, yes, we have had a great time tonight. We'll have an even better time tomorrow evening uh, when the subject will be uh, two gifts, two gifts that can change your life. Two gifts that can change your life. Be out here, bring a friend, and come and join us tomorrow. Be God bless This is
that was indeed a powerful message, indeed very fitting, especially for a time as this. You know, Sister Robinson, I have been hearing that Jesus is coming very soon from a child. The second coming is nearer than it has ever been before. Definitely, that was a sermon that we all needed to hear. Yes, indeed. As we close, I invite you to join us tomorrow at 7.15 p.m. on the Woodburn SDA's YouTube channel as we continue our new lifestyle evangelistic series with Pastor Derwin Clark. Yes, join us tomorrow. We will be looking at the topic, two gifts that will change your life. Can't wait to see what those two gifts are. Definitely bring a friend with you and don't forget to share, like, subscribe, click that notification bell so you won't miss any of this awesome God-given content. I am your host, Charlicia Robinson. And I am Claudia Fries-Butler. Good evening. <laughs>